Hi everyone, and welcome to episode number 37 of Perfect Inspiration. My name is Brian Matias. Uh, so recently I went uh, on a two-week trip uh, to Cambodia, and it was a really, uh, truly amazing, uh, eye-opening experience because um, I never really... I've traveled abroad, but I've never gone to such a remote place, uh, or at least uh, to me, remote. Um, totally different way of life in just about every single way that I'm used to. So um, when uh, I was thinking about this episode, I thought, you know, I remember uh, I was shooting more portraits uh, in Cambodia than I probably have in my entire life. Uh, the people there are just so friendly, so uh, amicable uh, with photographers that it, it's, it's hard not to take a shot of someone. Uh, and this uh, particular series of images is what uh, really kind of uh, got me thinking about wading. Um, as, a, as a kind of an architecture and landscape photographer, wading is just part of the game for me. Uh, you're waiting for the light or you're waiting for a particular condition, so it doesn't really phase me. But when I'm out here shooting people, um, especially uh, I consider myself more uh, of a novice in terms of portrait photography, uh, waiting can be very, very uh, distracting and it can make me feel even more self-conscious. Uh, but with this particular uh, situation, um, waiting is really what, uh, you know, is really at the crux of this episode because I was watching this woman, we, we visited this, uh, rice, uh, this uh, rice paper village and I could show you here uh, on the map right built into Lightroom 4. Uh, this is Batambang, so we were um, uh, driving around touring and we were at Ek, Ek Nam, um, which you can see right over here. And there was a village here and what they specialized in was making rice paper. And so we were just kind of on this road um, and uh, let me try zooming in a little bit more. I guess that's as far as I can go. Um, but there was a, just a little village of people making um, uh, rice paper. And so you can see here uh, this woman. And what I was doing was I was waiting for the right time. Before I even took this shot though, the first thing I did was I was analyzing um, what she was doing. And talk about a manual procedure. Uh, you know, she had these two surfaces over here and she would pour this uh, rice liquid uh, onto one of the surfaces, uh, then smooth it out and put this uh, tin cover over it. And then when the tin cover was over it, she would start on the other surface. So she was literally making one uh, rice paper at a time, alternating be between these two surfaces. Uh, and then she would use this stick right here to lift it up and give it over to someone else. Now, uh, it took a little bit for me to kind of study this because uh, I wanted to get the right shot. Um, but not only that, I also wanted to make sure that it was as uh, distraction free as possible. Like over here, you can see there is another person standing behind her uh, and this it wasn't the exact uh, action that I wanted to, ca to capture. So let's walk through here. So here, this is another shot. At this point, I was just kind of taking some test exposures. Uh, the, my shutter speed was a bit off. It was a, kind of dark under this canopy, so you got some motion blur. So I kept adjusting, and you can see here now this is um, a different exposure. Here, uh, the woman has already poured the liquid, and she's using the bowl to flatten and smooth it out. Um, and so I also noticed here, oops, I started cutting off her feet, which for me is a big distraction. I don't like to cut off anything at the edge of frames. Uh, so I fixed it and actually going back here. So here she's switching surfaces. It was important for me that uh, she was working on this surface because it was closer to me and it wouldn't have been uh, obstructed by anything. And so here she's lifting off the rice paper that was finished cooking. And then finally I was able to get it uh, at a point where this is the exact shot I wanted. Her pouring this rice liquid um, onto the surface uh, while the other surface was being used to cook. Um, so, so I finally got the shot. Uh, I was really happy with it, and I knew right away that this was a black and white image that I wanted to work on. Uh, so let's start with that. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and send it to Perfect Black and White by going to the File menu, selecting Plug-in Extras, and I'm going to go to Perfect Black and White. All right, so in Perfect Black and White, uh, what I like to do usually is start with a preset or an effect um, just to get things going. And so for me, I'm going to go to the 21st century modern digital and I'm going to select dramatic light. That's going to be kind of my launch point. 
I really love this look here. It gives a very, very nice, uh, kind of deep uh, emotional feel to it. And it's got a nice glow, which I love. Uh, I'm going to start first by bringing out the overall brightness uh, just a bit. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that black level just a bit and bring out the shadows. So the shadows are a bit too rich for me. So using the shadow recovery slider, I'm going to bring that up. And you're going to see that there the shadows are starting to appear, which is good. That's what I want. Now, um, I'm going to go skip. I don't, I'm not going to adjust anything in the color response pane, but I will go to the tone curve. So the tone curve is going to allow me to really refine the contrast of my image. Um, I could use the contrast slider, but the tone curve, I like it better because it gives me control of the highlights and the shadows and the lights and the darks, uh, specifically in terms of contrast. So I'm going to apply a, a pretty traditional S curve. I'm going to start by dragging up over here, and you can see how the highlights and the whites are getting brighter. And I'm going to drop down over here, and that's going to bring down uh, some of the shadows. And the reason why it's called an S curve is because it pretty much takes on kind of the shape of an S. And uh, a lot of times when you see tone curves, um, they usually take on uh, more of an S curve shape. Now with the um, glow here, I'm going to drop down the strength of that just a bit. I don't need that much glow. Uh, and then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to apply a toner because I want to give this kind of a color tint. So I'm going to turn the toner on and go to the presets and I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to apply a coffee preset, just coffee number one. Now with that, I'm going to bring the the first amount slider over here controls the color of the highlights. So you can see the brighter parts of the image are using this color as a tone. And the darker parts uh, are using the silver or shadows. So I'm going to bring this, the highlight slider down to zero. And you can see how we've abandoned that color. Now I'm going to restore it just a bit, just to give it a little bit of a, of a tint. Uh, I'll do the same thing with the shadows. I'll bring the shadows down and then bring it up um, maybe a bit more. So here we go. This is looking really good. And now I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to take the vignette that we have here, and I'm going to bring up the feather. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the transition. It's going to make it a much sm smoother, uh, softer transition. I'm going to bring the overall brightness down. And so you can see here, watch, let's let's turn the preview off. So it's a, it's a pretty big difference. You know, here, it's the thing with this shot is um, uh, the reason why I wanted to make it a black and white image is because this uh, rice milk or whatever it is, it's so pure uh, and white. Um, and, and I felt like it got lost with all of the other colors. So um, by converting it, it really kind of re takes on its own character. Um, and I absolutely love uh, the sculpture of this woman's face uh, with the light and the shadow play. So now that I'm done, I'm going to click Apply to return back to Lightroom so that we can uh, finish things off with some final processing steps. All right, so now we're in the Develop module of Lightroom. And I'm going to start by bringing out some more of the shadow details. So I'm going to press and hold on the Option key uh, on the Mac, Alt key on a PC while dragging on the shadow slider. I'm going to bring out some of those shadows and some of the black point. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my adjustment brush and I'm going to select brightness or rather exposure. Um, and I'm going to just add a little bit of exposure and a little bit of clarity. And I'm just going to draw right here on the woman's face just to bring out some more of that detail uh, on the shadow part of her face. Now I'm going to click new. I'm going to go over to clarity. I'm going to bring that up really high because I want to bring uh, out detail in uh, this metal uh, container, and I want to bring out detail uh, in the surface of the uh, where the rice is being poured on. I'm also going to bring out some exposure here. It got a little darker, so I'll make that a little bit brighter, and I'm going to bring up the contrast. Uh, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'll hit new, and this will just be a clarity again. Um, and I'm going to I want to bring out the texture of this woman's dress really love uh, the, the way the dress looks. It's really textured, so I really like that. Um, and so to finish things off, even though I applied a vignette in uh, perfect black and white, I'm still going to apply another one just to really bring the eye closer to, towards the center of the frame. And so there we go. Uh, let's go ahead here uh, to the uh, library view. Here is our color image again. Uh, and I, I do think here the black and white really gives it more of a timeless feel because uh, what they're doing here, I have to imagine that there are factories out there that can churn out thousands of sheets of rice paper by the minute, uh, if not more. 
Uh, here we have this woman uh, in the middle of Batambang, Cambodia, making one rice paper sheet at a time, which is pretty amazing. Um, so uh, with that, I hope, uh, I hope this kind of lesson uh, hits home with you with just studying your scene and not always running and gunning. Um, here, I spent some time making sure that I understood what this woman was doing, and then I waited for that right moment, not just the right moment for her to be pouring, but also the moment when there were no distractions behind her so that I can get the scene exactly the way I wanted. So with that, download the perfect black and white preset that I used to create this image with, uh, and I look forward to seeing you next week for episode number 38. Thank you very much.